Mm. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It's the Michigan football post game live here on the Maze and Blue Review. And not a great day for Michigan as they get manhandled at the big house, 31 to 12, the final by the Longhorns. Jim Scarcelli is with us. We're ready to go through this one. We'll look at your feedback and answer some of your questions, get your thoughts on this one. Scar, you're up the bat. Take a swing at what you saw out there on the turf with uh, Texas coming yeah, in. Texas, Texas is a really, really talented football team. They recruited really, really good players. They got Alabama type talent out there. It took, it would have taken a great effort. The, the kind of effort we needed today, Denny, was that. That 2021 Ohio State coming to big house type effort with the real good quarterback, and we just didn't get it. Uh, they got they, they're well, they're well coached. This guy did some smart things. Uh, he he exploited us on defense at times, and he ran the he, he Sark called a good game. Um, but you ain't beating nobody with four turnovers, Danny. Uh, four turnovers, it ain't happening. But uh, Denny, the Big Ten Championship is out there. I'm going to try to look at the positive side of things, okay? The Big Ten Championship is the number one goal. It's still out there. The good thing about this game is we know where the hell we're at. We know what we got, um, what we got to improve on. And some of those turnovers were just dropped. You know, it, it, Denny, I'm, I'm going I'm to say I, – I, I, I got a lot of faith in our quarterback. I'm not going to beat this kid up, man. For his second start against Texas, he, he you know, most of the balls he threw were catchable. The, you know, the tip ball, I don't know, third and two, you're calling a pass over the middle. I didn't like that call. I, I thought we had a nice, uh, a nice surface to run the football on there, the way they were lined up. Uh, and you know, we, how many balls did we tip and we didn't get nothing. They, we, they tipped the ball, they pick them off, but, the Big Ten Championship is out there. Um, our coach is going to get tested, Denny. I said it last year. I'm just keep you know. I'm gonna keep it real, man. You know, you you coach, uh, you run out there on a couple games and coach coach another guy's team. You know, on set, and, and, you know he's there all week. His coaches, his players. But now you're going to get tested. Now you're going to get tested as a head coach, and you get beat up at home like we did. Uh, the media is going to beat him up. You got to keep the players from pointing fingers. All that stuff is is going to be happening, okay? And and this is where you're tested as a leader. And um, you know we'll see how it plays out, man. But there's a lot to build on. I'm I'm confident because uh, it wasn't it, it wasn't terrible. Couple breaks go our way. The turnover battles go our way. Couple stops on third down. We're so close to getting some of those stops. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to disagree with you there, Scar. I thought this was terrible, and, and it's great to talk about the Big Ten because they haven't played any games, but it sounds more like a pipe dream after watching today's game. There were a lot of things that you could say. You're talking about beating them up. They deserve to be beat up. They got beat in every phase of the game and from the top to the bottom. I'm really surprised that Sharon Moore didn't have his team ready to play in any phase of the game, but what really was shocking is that the defense and Wink Martindale, until further notice, uh, Wink looks like a complete failure. He got worked over and got his pants pulled down and spanked by Sark. I mean, it, it, he ran circles around that Michigan defense, unless they weren't trying, because I know that's the way it looked, but it's almost like the turnovers, you put them in there, and it's almost like an excuse, like you're not going to win games. It didn't matter if Michigan didn't turn the ball over at all. Michigan doesn't look like they have a quarterback. They don't look like they have an offensive line. And Sharon Moore, you know, you give him a leash to say, okay, how's he going to run his program? How's he going to come in? He tiptoed into game week with, oh, I don't know. We're, we're going to be a little coy with the quarterback, and we don't know who's going to be our right tackle and center. And then they played the first half last week like it was an exhibition game. And then they came in today, and they were not ready on the national uh, stage. There was zero sense of urgency from that team from anywhere out there on the field. And it's quite the fall off when you watch a team win a championship, and then you watch a team come in. It looked like they uh, they had no answers for anything. But the biggest thing I come back to is the the defense – 
couldn't stop a cold today, and that was a shocker for me. And that has to go to Wink. It goes to Sharon Moore. He picked them, but it goes to Wink and his staff because those guys, they couldn't tackle. They had a poor game plan, whatever it was, blitzing. Uh, and, and, and Sark could have put up 50 on Wink if he wanted to. I disagree uh, I, with most of that. Um, I said we needed to kind of uh, perform. You know, that, that team is on the caliber of the 2021 Ohio State team that we beat to get our, our, our program rolling. They're on that kind of caliber defensively, uh, you know, uh, uh, early draft pick at quarterback, which we faced. in tw- We needed that kind of performance. Okay, and if you remember, we scored a lot more points in that game, and we didn't turn the ball over but maybe one time. And, uh, and, 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 and they moved the ball on us. And we, we faced – Denny, we faced a really, really good quarterback today. The kid, the kid may have had one uncatchable ball. I don't know that he made any – any freaking mistakes. He started 24 games. I knew there would be some of a, of a difference there. And listen, I'm not going to defend wink on everything he did. There there's, there's uh there's a lot that, that uh, they're going to look at. The big thing I'm uh, one of the biggest problems I had with the defense. We, we don't play enough guys in the defensive line. I thought we got tired second and third drive. We're rotating the edge guys. We're rotating linebackers. We're rotating secondary. What you have to do when they put long, you're playing so much defense as you did. But uh, the the, fu- the 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 future isn't good if you don't uh, start getting guys. Dev- Dan, let me just. I'm going to finish. I know I'm going long. I'm going to say one more thing to you. When I was a head coach, I was always thinking about game one the following year. Always thinking about it in practice. And then in the game, what the hell does thinking about game? Well, this Texas game, when I'm looking at it, I'm saying, okay, how much did our centers play last year? How much did our guards play? La- you know, Al L- Hadid played last year. How-, how much did some of these guys, our our receivers dropped a lot of balls. How much did, did we, if it did Davis Warren, how much did we have more opportunities to get them reps last year? And in- in- some of the guys on defense, and, and, and those are, you say, why the hell does it matter? It matters big time in a game like this. Because now a lot of those mistakes, we're going to look at the film Monday. A lot of the mistakes, a lot of our, our young players made, um, you know, some of that stuff is corrected if you get them reps the year before when you have the opportunity. Well, the offense was terrible, but you half expected it with the players that they had to replace and the way that they came into the season. But, you know, so, you know, hitting Kirk Campbell or, or Davis Warren or a lack of creativity. And then, you know, they, they didn't come out and the, the punter kicking 30 yarders right out of the gate. But uh, the Texas made it look so easy right from the jump. You're talking about them getting tired. They took the ball and went right down the field on Michigan like it was the Michigan defense that had to replace 10 players. They got lucky that uh, they had to attempt a field goal on that first drive because of the holding call, and they missed the field goal. But, man, right when they got it back again, woo, right down the field, right down the field again. And they hit them in the run game. I don't like uh, – I thought Jair Hill was a decent corner. He couldn't cover anything, and they were hitting him deep. They are hitting him on the seam. They were throwing screen passes, and then they were pushing him back. Michigan's vaunted defensive line, they were getting pushed into the backfield right off the bat. First drive, second drive, first quarter. I mean, this game was over by Texas's uh, uh, third possession, and everybody knew it. Michigan came out flat as a pancake, and Texas came out riding high. Man, like that was, and and that goes back to the head coach. Unfortunately, you know, what are we going to do? Just sit around and say, oh, hey, Sharon's got, no, Sharon Moore, the way that he had his team going all the way through, this is the game you pointed to to have him ready to go. So you say, hey, whatever you're going to do in that first game, you want to tiptoe around and play all these games and do all this and not have everything going, and then we'll see. This is when the uh, the, the first exam was, and they failed miserably now there's a lot of people who talk about this team going 500 and you know seven and five and i understand that by looking at them but you know, talking about the big 10 I, you know if wink I, I can't wait to see what wink's game plan is against usc because if usc comes out there and shreds this defense i think you're gonna have to put wink out there and say wow this is a gigantic this was a gigantic mistake 
hiring Wink Martindale. Hey, you know, this guy had a lot of personnel out there and he put him out there and he couldn't stop anything. He couldn't, he had no answers. Uh, he got worked over. I've never seen a coordinator with the talent that Michigan has get worked over like Wink Martindale did today. Okay. Well, it was a total, uh, it was a total team loss, Denny. You know, our special team. Yeah, it's a total team loss, but you expect a little bit of that from the offense. You got a walk-on quarterback who obviously, I don't know why I say he looked scared, but he couldn't step into a throw. He looked like he was a, a kid that was playing out there and the game was too fast for him. Couldn't throw the ball with authority off his back foot. The only time he really was able to do anything when he was running for his life, and then he had this like full jump stop over by the sideline, and then he would gun it back against the grain into like triple coverage into these tight windows. That's never going to work. That's never going to work. They don't have anything to work with offensively with, uh, with the quarterback situation. And I don't know. I don't know why they ever thought orgy was even the they, orgy is a wildcat quarterback. And they, and they, if you want to look to a point where they lost the game offensively, defensively, they lost it right off the bat because they couldn't stop anything. They were a screen door on a submarine the entire game. All of those guys, the press clippings, uh, Mel Kuyper, hey, you guys are all going in the first round of the draft. Those guys are all falling like a rock now after they watch this tape. But the offense, when they finally get down there and get a chance to do something, they bring Orgy in on the third and three and run him right up the middle. It's the most predictable call I've ever saw, Scar. And that – doesn't give Warren a chance. It doesn't build anything that he has on confidence that if he is going to be able to do anything and the rest of the offense is looking over there doing the same thing. Why are we running a guy and, and screwing around with the quarterback? The orgy package, I think they have to evaluate the, the formations and what gives the defense the biggest, like when, when they did that first stop was we pretty much, we went empty. And when you go empty with orgy, they know it's quarterback run. They they absolutely know it's quarterback run. When you when you put a running back next to them, I think I think it might be more of a problem to defend. Um, but Texas did a pretty good job in, in defending that formation. And we our coaches have to take a look at it and and uh, and try to get an advantage. Denny, listen, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna say this early in the game. I was happy with a lot of the shifting and the, because it was Michigan football. We we got our we got our team some some advantages at least with some of the shifting and motions and stuff and Texas adjusted pretty good and we moved the ball decently and the, but then we would just get stopped on third down. The flea uh, flicker was nice, you know. They hit Charleston on that second drive. Yeah, I mean some of the some of the play calling, you know, if we if we had that whole that game in front of us and we're looking at it, I'm seeing some creativity. I'm seeing the same stuff we won with. We don't just have the biggest best offensive lineman. I'm sorry. We, we don't, man. We, we've, we've had good players, we, uh, with good, you know, good, smart quarterback play, securing the ball, a lot of things, team offense, shifting motions, it, getting advantages for our team. And uh, we just – we didn't get it done today. But I, I'm i not I'm not the end of the world like you here, and I'm not going to uh, say that we made a mistake with Wink because I saw a lot of things out there. I saw a pretty damn good quarterback playing for Texas. That was no stiff. That kid started 24 games. He had him in the finals. He went on the road to beat Alabama last year. Uh, and, and, and they've surrounded that team with some damn good players. They're big, strong kids. It almost looks like we got out recruited a little bit, too. When you look at the size of Texas in, in, in every all 22 positions, it, it almost looks like they, you know, they've done a number on us in recruiting, too. Well, Texas, they've got they're backed by that oil money. They've got they do great in recruiting. They do great great in the transfer portal. Look, I don't want to you know make it sound like I'm trying to react, not overreact. Like I don't think Sheryl Moore should be fired, and I don't think Wink Martindale should be shown the door after two games. But this is a referendum on these guys. How you're going to start? It, you know, there's no shame in losing to Texas, like you say, like Quinn Ewers, man. He was. On the, on the butt, man. He was spreading the ball around. He looked great. Sarks uh, obviously knows how to, you know, uh, scheme up and, and get his guys open. But if we're going to be honest and say, okay, well, you know, what did you think of Michigan? Well, they got a big F. They got an F across the board. There's nothing to, to build on here. And, and if Wink gets, uh, you know, smacked around like he did today, 
against USC, there's not going to be anybody that's going to be on his side. So, and, and Sharon Moore, you're, you can go through all the stuff and do everything else and smash, but we're going to look and see how you have your team ready to play. And he didn't have his team ready to play, Scar. How do you, how do you uh, excuse this team coming out and not being ready to go on offense, we get defense was a question mark. Or when you say, Danny, when you say not, when you say not ready to play, do you mean like effort? Yeah, what do you mean? effort, not effort. No, no, no. effort went off on the field, got lucky on the first drive, got manhandled, pushed yeah. all around on the well, second. That's, that's different. Getting, getting, uh, having a a first round draft choice, throw the ball around with some good play calling and some good scheme. That, that created problems for a defense, that's a little different than effort. I didn't see lack of effort by anybody out there today. It was – they had good players, they got good coaches, and they did some good things. And then we didn't we didn't do a great job, uh, uh, you know, on offense and, and defense. When they were kicking ass and, and, and you know, not taking names and getting pushed around like that, I'm sorry, Scar, that's the way it looked. Well, you, you think that's – I don't believe that that's an effort thing. I think All right. People, well, they're just not – you know what? They're not all that good. This, well, this okay. advertisement, so they, yeah. they get exposed, and, and maybe it's the coordinator, maybe it's the coach, whatever his speech was or anything else, why they came out flat, I don't know. I, you know, they, they thought, like, we're, we're the national champs and we've got a, a chip on our shoulder, but none of it worked. So, I don't whatever you want to say about him. All right, you know uh, – uh, prop them up. Let's go. You know, they'll be fine. We got the big 10 to play for. I just didn't see any signs of any of that yeah. that you're talking about. I, I do. I see. I see. Here's, let me just go a couple things. You know, Ben Hall gets in there, did some decent things. Good to see. We, I'm going to look at a couple little positive things. Showed us that we might have a third back. Um, Danny, let's not forget 1980, Johnny Wingler and the boys, they lost to Notre Dame. In South Carolina, first two games of the year. They went on to win 10 straight, Big Ten championship, and won in the role. Just want to point that out. Some other things. Um, Wink, I thought he did it. I thought he started out wanting to stuff the run, and we, we did a decent job early on making him one dimensional. Then later in the game, we were not able to make him one dimensional. I think a part of that was not playing enough guys. Um, yours showed me, and God, the kid is just smart, stepping up in the pocket. How many times did we get pressure on that kid? And he, you know, you think he's not an athletic kid, and he knows how to step up in the pocket, and uh, and then he throws an accurate pass. So we, we did apply him. We got him to move, Denny, but he's not a stiff. He's not a clown. I, I No, I don't think so. I, I wonder about without knowing, like you're the, 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 the guy that played, and it'll be interesting when you see the film, but – it was almost like the geometry of the defense was off. Like viewers would throw somewhere. And then I've got Paige looking like he's totally out of position. I got, you know, Jair Hill diving at somebody's feet and then, you know, just running through a seam with, with, with no help anywhere. It, it was like, it, it was like um, Sark had Michigan's place and that Michigan was in quicksand. I don't know. That's the way it looks. So I, that's sometimes you get, you know, you, you run into a buzzsaw, but, you know, Michigan hasn't run into a buzzsaw in a long time. So as they were getting clean cut and blown away, it, it was hard to try to, you know, pick up the pieces and sit here and tell everybody like, oh, you know, there, there's some decent things. And you're talking about, uh, you know, Ben Hall had one carry, so maybe they got a third back, you know, uh, that doesn't make well, it. I'm just, I'm just going to go over a couple of things that are from a positive. He did actually play and he made a guy miss. It, I'm just looking, going to look at some small positive things. We did. I looked at some busted assignments on defense. I counted three that were real big ones. Um, but uh, what else do I have here? Uh, let's talk kick game, kicking game real quick, Denny. Our kickoff coverage was okay. And then we go off sides on the outside. I wanted to look at penalties, Denny. I told you penalties is, is, is one of the big, biggest indicator of a head coach. Penalties. Okay, we go off sides on the damn uh, – onside at the end of the game then we get a, a hold on our kick return our special team coach needs to get checked Sharon needs to get him checked out because we had penalties on that phase of our game our punter didn't get it done um you know our kicker can make a kick though uh, and I talked about the orgy package Danny it has to be 
Some of those formations, no, it's it's good. It has to be. You got to get formations and you got to get an advantage in there. You and we just Texas had us figured out. You know, we went empty. They knew exactly what the hell we got to do. But if you want to break down some of the position groups, I'm glad. I got some thoughts and notes on every position. Well, let's do it. I do want to say my phone's lighting up. Jordan Love. Um, Adam Schefter says, believed to have suffered a non-season ending uh, MCL. So uh, I just wanted to say that. Well, well, let's go. Let's go through the – you just went through the special teams, and I agree. You know, Doman – who was so good last year, except the one game, I think it was against Penn State. I don't remember one of them. He had an off game, but you know, coming out, you, you need your, your punter, and he didn't have it right out of the gate. The defense didn't have it right out of the gate. I don't know. Tell me some things that you saw on defense that you may have put down as a positive. I'll see if I can look through it. You know, I thought we, I, I, tackling in space, I, I thought the big thing to win this football game, Denny, and I didn't go over it, I'm going to do that in the future. The keys are always secure the football and then great red zone defense. Same game plan like we always had against the Buckeyes, and we and we we did not secure the football. We did not have good red zone defense. This team had a good run game, but we tackled in space pretty decent at times, and then we uh, we you know we let it ha- you know let it uh, we makes had some misses out there. Tark Sark comes out throwing first five plays of the game. He's throwing the football on us. Like, wow, he respects our defense. Um, and I thought, okay, maybe they respect us. Wink is making them one-dimensional. But I was – Denny, I'm going to just go through my notes here. I was – I was – I'm, I'm concerned that we, we don't sub our D-line enough. And I and I know having been a guy that played, I never forget my first start against Miami, 90 degrees, you know, long drives, you're sucking air, and you're not getting subbed out. It's not a good thing. And it, 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 I saw Mason Graham and Kenny Grant. I thought they played tired. I don't know what the hell. They kept blowing up Eno Etta like he's this, that, or whatever. They got all this confidence in him, and they played him like one play in the game. So I don't know what the hell's going on there. They're putting 91 in there. Uh, that's Pierce, right? Yes. You know, they, they played him a little bit. So I want to see more of that. I I'm sorry, thought, 91's, uh, 91's Brant. Brant, Brant. You know – our edge guys, they were, you know, not not nearly as. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't they, see him. Derek Moore made a few plays in yeah, the, the in presence. The, the, the presence, uh, it wasn't it wasn't as loud as it was the week before. Uh, but I do like that they're rotating guys. We're getting guys uh, developed there, but uh, it was hard rushing on those offensive tackles. These guys were a whole lot different getting outside of them than the Fresno tackles. So our edge guys will look at it. They got to get better. Uh, the DT, Benny, you know, De- another thing, Denny, Wink likes, uh, I don't know if it was this team, but he's playing a hell of a lot of base, which means three defensive linemen, okay? Minter was a hell of a lot more nickel against some of these same formations, so that means we got one less uh, defensive lineman in the game in the nickel, extra secondary guy. So that's more reason to develop depth on the D line. So th- that's something that's obvious, an obvious difference, at least for this game. Scott, we- why in that why in the, the first series of the game do you have on a third down? You got one of the fastest wide receivers in the country bolting down the seam with you know in single coverage. I mean, is, is that was that a blown coverage? The, 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 well, Danny, it's the same thing. Are you gonna you know he's I see what Wink's trying to do. He's trying to mix up and create problems with with protection. I see what he's doing. Okay, and then the same guy that the guy that yells. When you allow a receiver to do that, you're going to yell when there's no uh, pressure on the quarterback. And he I'm finds going to yell when, when the, the tight end is not being leveraged and you know standing there in the back of the end zone, you know setting up a, a you know a tent as you know the the quarterback rolls around and just throws it right to him. And you know they make mincemeat of the of the you know the defense that was being propped up and talked about that it could be better than last year's when when the Longhorns are taking you right down the field and they're just rolling you up. They're just rolling. And you know, the, it was, a, they never could stop. They never, Michigan's defense never gave the offense, which was never going to do anything, but they never even gave the offense a glimmer of hope. And then finally, when the offense did move down there, they got that Charleston play 
like they talked about on the flea flicker. They brought in Orgy, and they sn- that was the biggest play of the game. They just snuffed everything out. They had to score some points, and they snuffed that out and went with a field goal. You know, think, oh, we're just going to get some points here. But in the grand scheme of things, that's why you don't blank around with a quarterback position. Everybody's over there looking like, oh, we're scrambling. The defense can't stop anybody. We've got to get a first down here. We're settling for a field goal. This team, you know, they 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 got shell-shocked. That's how it looked. The bomb went off, and then everybody was walking around there, including – and most importantly, Sharon Moore, who stood over there and never had an answer and an adjustment for anything. And, hey, yeah, if really. we're going to praise everybody and have a parade and put their hands up and talk about how great and well-coached they are, when they come out and lay a stink bomb like they did today, you know, they need to be called out and, and told that. These guys should be back in their dorm room with their heads down. Because this one was a complete disaster on every level, Scar. I know you're saying you're looking for some bright spots in the in the third string running back out of carry and made somebody miss. That's nice against Arkansas State. But you know, this is where you get a chance to evaluate yourself. Texas, they're playing for a national championship. What was Michigan? The, the idea of this was Michigan was going to compete in the Big Ten this year. Michigan does not look like a contender for anything. Because they they showed nothing to make you feel that way. Give me something to hang my hat on that besides the well, you know, there there's O and O in the Big Ten, and they still got the Big Ten championship to play for. What's one thing? Because last game you can say, oh well, Coastin Loveland, man, that guy. Well, Coastin Loveland was part of the problem. He's over there, and you know you can't count on him. You couldn't count on the offensive line. You counted on nobody on offense. And you're supposed to be able to rely on the defense. And I didn't see anybody on the defense that you can rely on. You can rely on the, the place kicker. He's the one. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty he he's he's a solid uh guy we can count on. And you know, when you are you, making these points again, I'm thinking about what did we do to help for this big first game? I looked at number 20 out there on defense. Uh Hill, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he well, here's my question. We knew he was good, but how much work did he get last year? Because he made it, he made some, he did some good things t- uh, today, but he, he made some mistakes too. He made some mistakes. And I'm, 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 in my head, I'm thinking, how much did we get that kid ready? I look at number 10. Well, I wonder why. So to that point, uh, Sharon Moore, you know, is playing this exhibition game last week against Fresno, he's swapping out the whole secondary in the second quarter. Maybe Hill could have used some of those extra reps. That's the problem. Well, you know, you, you can make, I, I get, I get that. When you get cute. Hey, if Moore would have come out there and, and and had his team and they looked like they were on point and played well and hung in there and lost, you say, all right, hey, Sharon looks like he knows what he's doing. Uh, all of these things that he did that that don't look – like what you have seen coaches do on down throughout the years. Hey, he's, he's zagging when, you know, and, and, and he, this is a, a coach that is confident in what he's doing and you're seeing it out on the field. But when you zag it, it doesn't work. You don't look like you know what you're doing. That's what it looks like with Sharon Moore right now. This comes back to him. That's the first one. And it yeah, goes no question there, Danny. Sharon it's, Moore it's, one, wink number two. That's what it goes to. If you want to go to the side of the ball, I'll go to the defense because the defense you expected to be good. The offense you didn't expect, to, you know, the a whole hell of a lot from. So Moore and Martindale, that combination right now, not looking so hot for Michigan. Oh, so in, in your eyes, the offensive coordinator is off the hook. He's well, off the I, hook. You know, no, because they played terrible too. Okay, the, no, there you they go. Didn't have anything going there either. Now we're talking. I give them, I How about give them the special team coordinator. Here's why, I give him a bit of a break, Here's why I give him a little bit of a break. You, uh, Davis Warren is not a Division I starting quarterback. It, and you want to say he can develop over time? You want to give him a little bit of a break there? All right, I'll do a little bit of that. This offensive line is, uh, is not winning anything. They push nobody around. They're giving nobody any time. They don't look like they're ready to go. There's a reason. Sometimes, yeah, you stay around, you get in there, you get your shot. But this this is not a, a well-coordinated and offensive line that is ready for any kind of uh, – they're not a top 25 offensive line. So, yeah, not a good line. You don't have a quarterback. 
And so, yeah, I give a little bit of a break for Campbell for going vanilla. I don't know how much a break, you know, he was involved in the whole orgy situation. Let's play him here. Let's play him there. Let's run him right up the middle on a third down. I guess that was his call. But, yeah, I'll put him number three, Scott. Okay, there you go. Now we agree. And Campbell. Then we'll go uh, the entire defense, and then I'll go to the quarterback, and then I'll go to the offensive line. Okay. I'm in agreement that it's a total wipeout and everybody's responsible. That I am in agreement with you on. I'm not – no one's off the hook if I'm coaching this team. So let me me also say this. Linebacker play. One thing about Michael Barrett, you know, he used to be that Viper. He was damn good in coverage. We got two big, thick, run-stopping linebackers, and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not the great – you know, we had Barrett which was really good in coverage. And I'm just seeing a little difference there. They just have to get better. We got to be smarter with that. So that's that. I think I'm done with the defense. Uh, Play more guys on defense is the big thing with me, especially up front. My big thing is why not do what you were doing last year with the defense? Because it seemed to be working pretty good. And I know you got to put your own stamp on everything, but damn it, you know, he said it coming in like, "Eh, you know, I'm the one that invented this. I'm the OG, all that crap. And you know he this looked like uh, you, this looked like somebody that had no idea that the, the, the other coach was smiling because he's like I know exactly what the hell Wink Martindale is going to do and we're going to attack him. We're well, sitting. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. Listen, if, when, when we look at what he did schematically, you're not going to see much of a change. The di- big difference is 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 that wasn't freaking Iowa out there. Some of those teams we hammered last year. That was a little different football team. Let's talk about some things, uh, some other thoughts. All right. First, pl- first play of the game. You know, you, we go off sides. We go off sides the first time we get on the field. I think that was big hinting. So I just I wanted to talk about that. That was uh, that was not a good thing. Um, but as as far as uh, Let's see what I got here. We talked about the deflected pass, the first play. I saw a lot of formations and stuff that we, you know, we didn't show any of this for uh, Fresno, but it was back to Michigan football early on. It gave us some advantages, but we get stuffed the first drive. Then we came out the second drive, and I was, I, you got to throw the ball on first down every now and then. You can't, I don't care how young your quarterback is, and we did, and we, 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 uh, you know, we made some plays early, him throwing the ball on first down. Uh, we ran some different formations. We ran the power play out of split backs. The flea flicker, like you said, creative. Uh, we dropped a lot of balls, Danny. Our, our receivers dropped a lot of balls. Our tight end dropped the ball. Tight end catches a ball and fumbles it. Anyway, that's that. What else do I got? Two what, what you, what you put, down, this about, is just, what you put this, down about the quarterback, Scar? What would you put down there? Well, what I got on the quarterback was, listen, this kid did, if you asked me to watch Cade McNamara, Cade McNamara had three lamb chops to get ready. This kid, if I look at, again, we won with Cade McNamara. This kid, fourth and four, he's running around, he makes a play, keeps the thing alive. Third down, he's running around, uh, made a play. Um, The deflected pass was... It, it didn't go, you know, it was, that was, that was, I don't know. You're going to blame the quarterback for a deflected pass, but a lot of his balls were catchable. A lot of receivers didn't help him. Uh, but what, if you looked at, if you're asking me is quarterback, the number one problem on that football team, it is not, in my opinion, there's a hell of a lot more. Every, everybody is responsible, but this kid, uh, we can win with this kid, in my opinion, because we won with Cade McNamara and, this kid is is no different in my in my opinion, um, but uh, what else do I have here? The orgy package. Then we get then we got to screw around. It takes too long to get the orgy package in. That's on the offensive coordinator. That's on the something. We got to call timeout. That stuff has to be coordinated, and we got to figure out the right formations to run that stuff. You know, I, I'm looking at the offensive line. Did we get movement at times? Yes. Uh, did we, I thought we passed protect fairly decent. I mean, the kid wasn't running for his life. There's times he was able to step up and make some plays, but offensive line has to get better, but they, they sure as hell didn't get run over, you know, like, uh, running back play. 
Um, Donovan did a few things. Uh, he showed some vision, I thought, early on. And then it, it's obvious they, they they think that Mullings is probably <laughs> – Mullings got more reps and more looks and more touches. Um, but we dropped – our receivers dropped balls, zero dropped balls, eight dropped balls. Tight end play, I, I, I was glad to see us throw the ball to Klein one time. Both those guys did a decent job blocking, but, uh, you know. That's I wonder to your point when they, they had to call that timeout that you're talking about. There were more than one. It'd be interesting. That'd be something when you're at the game that you're uh, you, you look at. But there were a couple of times Donovan Edwards is over there. You know, they look panicked. They look panicked in the huddle. They had me panicking. It's like, oh my gosh, you guys, I mean, you get some of that because you got a first time quarterback and the 10 new thing, and it's a game two and everything else, but not that much. Not so much where they're always waving and they're going to call timeouts. And it was not just once, it was multiple times where these guys, you know, they're getting up there. All of a sudden the clock's ticking down. You can't play like that. That can't yeah, well, that, that goes that's to that. coaching, that's Danny. That's, you're right. That is coaching. That, that is that is 100 culture. Oh, that's not on the kids gosh, at all. That part right there. Uh, you know, again, that all. That's why I'm not letting anybody off the hook. If I'm the head coach, I'm not letting anybody off the hook. But I'm looking at, again at you know Davis Warren had a third and long where he rolled out and threw a nice pass to. Remember that one nice pass he threw to Loveland? Yeah, yeah I don't know. that was a triple coverage. In a I, I get it, but my, my point is, my point, my point is, when I looked at this team, I was I had serious doubts about quarterback, and I just think we can win with this kid, man. You know, we're a long way. You know, we got we we've got Arkansas State coming in, and uh, we'll get things cleaned up, get a win, and then we got to get ready for USC. Okay, you want to take some? Yeah, let's go, Danny. I know they're probably beating up Scar because I'm trying to stay positive. Well, but, we got uh, a Texas fan in there. Give us, give us the thought on how good you think Texas is. You said you, you Texas you is. Uh, listen, Texas. You, you can see they lost. In, you know that you you could tell they lost their great running backs. Okay, they still blocked us, and they had a- average running backs in there, but they they've got huge, good offensive linemen. They got one of the top quarterbacks in the country. They got tight ends that can block and catch. Uh, their offense is really, really good. And Sark calls a hell of a game. He's a, he's a, he's freaking, he's a problem. Sark calls a good game. Their yeah. defense is big, strong, athletic, well coached. They got lined up against us. Um, you know, they, they, their kicker, I don't know, but uh, Texas could win it all, man. With that quarterback, uh, you know, and they can run it all. It up. You know, when you're running an end around and a guy goes untouched for 55 yards like he did, that that. Oh, uh, you know, and Danny, I got that in my notes there too. You know, th- this is a, this is the point I made about him being well coached. You know, when he ran that play, you know who went in the game when he ran that play? 91 went in the game as an edge player. Hmm. You know what coaches do? Smart coaches will do when they're when you're putting those substitutes in, trying to get them work. Sometimes they'll throw at that guy. Or they'll they'll run a reverse at that guy, you know, and uh, I think they saw ninety one in the game. The kid hasn't played. They ran the reverse at him. It, 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 he he should have been right there to make the play. I, I I don't think that would have happened with Josiah Stewart or Moore was in the game. All right, uh, we'll take some of these. Let's just roll through them here. Can't excuse Sharon Moore. He organized this disaster. There's one from uh, BK, can't throw the ball. Even if you have to line up seven offensive linemen, you have to be able to run the ball. We don't have a quarterback. Arkansas State won't be real. You know what that means? That well, It's not a real. We got to help our quarterback, man. We got to help. You got to help them with a run game, with formations. Receivers can't drop balls. You you got to help them, man, and it, it's just take. It was a whole overall not good enough presentation by the offense. How about this one, the orgy? There was a lot of people during the game that I was monitoring on the Maze and Blue Review of the Den. They do a game thread, which is a wild roller coaster ride. You could expect what it was like during this game, but there were some folks in there saying, "Hey, you got to give orgy a, a series, if not a quarter." You know, that's what happens when you start spotting a guy, but. What about Tuttle? Because there was some thoughts that if the Tuttle was going to be the starter, if he didn't get hurt and he's making his way back, do you think that's on the yeah. table or Jaden Davis? Let me, let me, 
Let me give you my take on Tuttle. I'm going to give you my take on this whole program in terms of the decision with quarterback and Tuttle. Okay. In 2023, J.J. was our unquestioned quarterback. He was our starter. Do you know who was our unquestioned backup? It was Tuttle. Tuttle was unquestioned. Our unquestioned backup. Tuttle was. People need to understand that. He was clearly the backup quarterback. Okay. We go through the year. He, uh, he, he, gets, uh, he gets banged up, whatever. So there's a lot of things we don't know. So the coaches have to make a decision at the end of the season. The kid's got this problem. We don't know what the hell it is. Okay, do we, do we go into the portal and, and be, be all done with the seven-year guy? or Because I guarantee you a, a big factor in, the, in this decision was the doctor, the doctor's. Our coaches sat down with the doctors and talked about Tuttle, the guy who was our unquestioned backup last year, and said, "What's the story?" And I think they made that decision not go to not go into the portal because they believed Tuttle was going to be fine. So now we go through spring ball without him, thinking he's going to be fine, and now he's 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 out. So I I, I just think that's I'm just guessing. No, I don't have anything confirmed. I don't know anybody. Just guessing. So that's where we are with, uh, with 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 why Davis Warren is now the starter because I think they they were clear that Tuttle was the backup last year. Hey, what's this question here? Please tell me how you can defend lining up Graham on the edge. Uh, well, he they did put him out there a little bit, and they uh, you know they blocked him. He's he, he's uh, he has his strengths, he has his weaknesses, but they are mixing him up. That uh, they are mixing him up, trying to. Uh, utilize his talents but I think if we look at the film um you'll see that he was blocked you know again the offensive line Texas has got some good players man six seven six six three hundred twenty five pound four or five star kids on that offensive line so those aren't stiffs uh this is you answering the question a lot of people wondering about why did Michigan hit the portal the guy that went to the Miami or McCord was already gone to Syracuse when Harbaugh and JJ were still technically thinking about coming back. You know, they won the championship January 8th. They had the, the uh, parade five days later on the 13th Harbaugh didn't leave to the end of the month. And, you know, Harbaugh was busy doing things and, and playing ward on both sides and, and the chargers and everything else. He wasn't thinking about the portal, but I think what you say is, uh, I think is correct that the, the portal had dried up. There might've been a, a couple of players in there. They might've wanted to give a shot to, but they thought total was going to be able to come back and then he got hurt again. So th- there is that part. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's, it, 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 it's, it's nothing we can do about it now, but I'm just trying to speculate. I don't know. I'm like, I mean, what the hell? The kid was the backup. He was the unquestioned backup last year. And then he gets banged up, and then he they keep they, they they don't bring anybody in, but they he's still on the team, and he's going through spring ball and no guys. So anyway, listen, man, we 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 got to just stay. They they, they got to stay together and focused. And uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, again, man. Sharon Moore is tested now. You are tested now. No, you're right about that. What about yeah, Darius? You know, Darius, Darius, you, Darius makes a point about some of the. Darius makes a point about some of the DTs twisting and some of the different stunts. Yes. Yeah, w- wink. You know, let, let's Danny. I've had teams that uh, I just had. I've had poor game plans against. It happens as a coach too, man. And uh, and Wink will look at it and let's let's evaluate the guy as we go through the year, man. You know, can he can he? Because it happens. P- coaches have bad adjustments and bad game plans, just like players do. I. I've been a, I've been that guy in both in both situations. So you've answered this one already, but why don't you go ahead and answer it again? Don says Michigan should set their sights on next year. Too much to overcome this year. You already. I, I, I mean, come on, man. We haven't played a Big Ten game uh, again. Michigan. I get back to go 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 research 1980 Michigan. They got beat up by Notre Dame. Got beat by uh, George Rogers in South Carolina. And then Johnny Wangler and Anthony Carter and Ken Avino and those guys, they, they, they won 12, 11 straight. Okay, <clears throat> won a Big Ten championship. So, and, and, and everybody was all of the, 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 you know, we're done. Shen Beckler's done, man. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. He's losing it after those two, two early losses. So, 
just you know keep the faith man let's, let's yeah let's, i would be more even though things don't look very promising in 98 after michigan had won the national championship they lost their first two games to notre dame and then to donovan McNabb and syracuse but then they ripped off um 10 in a row nine in a row they ended up losing to ohio state but tom brady got him back and got him playing for a big 10 championship but that's not tom brady under center. So you do know that. How about Davis Warren throwing against his body and against the grain way too much? I think that's a fair observation. What do you think? You know, Danny, listen, man, no one, no one yelled at, uh, at Brett Favre when he used to do it and he was successful. When you start having problems and the, obviously the kid and the coach, the coach obviously is allowing some of these things to happen if players do it. And they probably told the kid, look, it's not something you're supposed to do. Everybody talks about that, right? Even Todd Blackledge talks about that. You're not supposed to do it. <laughs> but you see quarterbacks on Saturday and Sunday do it. So yeah. some coaches probably tell the kid, look, I listen, there's things I wasn't supposed to do as a defensive player. And my coach said, look, this, this, or whatever. But there's times that you do it if you think you can make a play. Okay? And the coach – and I told my players, look, I know – you know what you can't you, – you should and should not do – but if you think and you you really you know, Coach Moeller used to tell the linebackers all the time about going underneath on outside runs. You know, you got to, anyway. And he, but he told, him, look, if you can make the damn play, do it. It's something you're you uh, tactically not supposed to do. So maybe the coach allows it, you know. But just make damn sure you don't get picked off. That might be how it's presented. Yeah, I think that I had the best program director I ever had in radio said, uh, I broke one of his rules one time and I came in. I said, yeah, but it worked really good. And he said, you know what? Once in a while, you want to break some of my rules. That's okay. Don't break any of my laws. That would be the same thing. How about the play calling, Scarve? Uh, now that you can go back and take a look at it, what would you have done differently? Uh, I think the, the offense – it was over for them in the second drive when they went down there and got some points and, and put orgy in and snuffed that out. They had to score a touchdown there. I know it was very early and it was just the second series. And if it wasn't for that one, I would go to when Michigan got their just second series in the second quarter, Warren misses a big throw downfield. Then he throws it to Loveland and he fumbles game was over right there. So I don't know what, what you would have, did they try to, uh, smash with Donovan Edwards right out of the gate and, you know, see if their offensive line, you know, where they stood against that, that defensive line. It could, what would you have done differently? Oh man. I, I give Texas credit for adjusting and understanding a lot of the things we wanted to do. Um, but again, Michigan hasn't won three champions championships in a row, just knocking people off the ball, Danny. That's not how we won. And it, a lot of it is on coaching. Uh, fooling people, scheming people. We didn't see any quarterback run out of the RPO. I don't care how fast the kid is, Denny. He's not the fastest kid in the world, but if you run that play once or twice and let him run, I've seen teams with slow quarterbacks do that. You follow me what I'm talking about? How yeah. we used to run that with JJ? Some of those things, you know, they give the, they, the, the defense has to honor it, even if, only, if you're only picking up four or five yards. So, um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's an overall play calling players, quarterback line, everybody not good enough and, um, give credit to Texas too. But I, I don't know that I have a simple answer for, uh, for that question <laughs> because it's, 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 it's everybody, man. And it isn't just play calling. You got to block guys. You can't fumble the damn ball when you do execute. I think this one's spot on. The third down defense really let Michigan down. That You saw that on the first drive. Third down, complete. Third down, picked it up. Yeah. Third down, picked it up. You know, you know what I saw, though, Danny? You know, it was interesting. I, I, give, I give Mason Graham, and maybe the coaches talked about it, early on, third down, some of those big plays, yours is stepping up in the pocket, stepping up in the pocket. And then later on, I, st I saw Mason Graham – Bull rushing, we did a lot of, you know, Minter did a, in, in Elston, bull rushing, and then come off and make a play on the quarterback, step it up. You remember seeing that? Yeah. Okay, so instead of 
you know, was that a was that a strat a, 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 a in game adjustment that said, listen, we just want my one technique and my three technique to just rush the quarterback, bull rush, and be able to come off the thing. So. All right, well, we can sit here all day answering these questions. Here's Vince wants to know how you can expect Michigan to beat USC, Oregon, or Ohio State. I don't know that those teams are going to have better players than what we just faced today. Okay, you you know, Oregon, but all of them have real good quarterbacks. All three of them teams have real good quarterbacks, good, great athletes, but I don't know that it's better. I mean, they, 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 it's not it's not like they have better <laughs> uh, quarterback a talented football team. They're going to be pretty damn good, but we just got to get better, man. Yeah. They're going to get better everywhere. They will lose to all of those teams. Yeah, but. There's no question, Danny, but again, man, you know, let's see what kind of leader our, our show Moore is. Let's, let's see what, how he keeps, you know, it, 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 this is when players start pointing fingers, man. It, 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 again, you got to, you got to make sure the assistant coach has got to really hold this team thing together, man. Orgy and Edwards are spending too much time on the bench. This is from CN. He says they're the most explosive players on Michigan's offense. The coaches think otherwise. Orgy is, uh, he's got to be a pass threat for, for, uh, for him to get more playing time. I think, I think he's, that's probably, you know, they just load up against the run when he's in the game. I don't know how accurate this stat is, but, but BK says, Kirk Campbell has thrown the ball with Warren 25 and 33 times in JJ's three seasons at Michigan. He never threw the ball 25 times or more in back-to-back games. Well, because we, you know, our run game was uh, kept them from having to do that, Denny. Yeah. That's you, you don't want to have to throw the ball so much. Um, you, you like to be able to just hand the ball off and run your jet sweep and run, you know, run some other stuff. That's it. All right. Well, Scar, we, uh, I don't know. Sometimes they say, you know, take the tape and burn it. You'll be looking through the tape to see if you can find some things. Oh, hell yeah. You're going to, you're going to, this film, uh, Denny, we're going to learn more from this film about the mental toughness, the physical toughness. They're going to learn everything. They're going to look at that film. There are going to be some hurt feelings in there, man. And if I'm the head coach, I'm ripping everybody. I'm coming after it. I'm ripping coaches. I'm ripping players. Ain't no one off limits. You got you got to come in there swinging, man. I've been that guy, and he will because every everybody has got to get better. We we weren't good enough, but I ain't throwing the towel in, Denny. I've been around. We're gonna we're gonna get it right. I feel like that dude in the Clockwork Orange that Stanley Kubrick had his eyes like you know that I'm gonna have to watch the film. <laughs> watch. Well, we're gonna learn film. from it, man. We're gonna learn from it. Be some hurt feelings, but you know. It is what it is. We got to get better. Well, how about we give some some final thoughts? For me, when you have a three year run like this, and then you you culminate it with winning a national championship, and, and we know that they they transition. You know that head coach is the most important, and and, and the, the putting together this staff, they had to do it you know relatively quickly, and. They didn't have a quarterback and they had 10 new guys on offense, but man, it was quite a fall off when you have a team coming in. It's too bad that you couldn't have had last year's team playing this year's schedule and then vice versa, because I think Davis Warren could have gone out there and beat East Carolina and UNLV and BG and Rutgers in the start. They didn't, Michigan really didn't play anybody until game eight last year, but that was a product of an easy start this year. That was never happening. They've got juggernauts all the way through. And they don't have uh, experience anywhere on that offense. And the one guy that is their biggest playmaker, he let him down with that, you know, fumble. If the game wasn't over at that point, it certainly felt like it was. So they got a lot of pieces to pick up. And the one part that you're right about, Scar, is that nobody believes in him now and everybody's pointing fingers at him. Nobody thinks Sharon Moore is doing a good job. Everybody's against Wink. And people think that this team's going to lose four or five games. So uh, we demand in society and sports – that you overreact, you overreact on, on everything. So there's going to be, you know, as bad as you think it is, and and I think it is, and Scar thinks it is. There's ready for there's already people that are ready to take this up a couple notches because we are programmed to overreact. Try to just react to where it's at. Well, you, and you know, Danny Scar's not overreacting. You heard no, you're, me. 
You're not. No, you're not. You know, I'm, I, I, I've been, in, I've, I've been in that building. I understand it as a player and coach, and, and, but we're just seeing how we respond. That's the key, man. Let's see how we respond next week. I want to see more D linemen playing. Okay, but anyway, I'm keeping the faith. Uh, I think we got quarterback play we can win with. Let's just keep getting better, and um, we've got two weeks before we play that first Big Ten game. And that's the number one goal. Let's put another ring on that finger. It can happen. Denny, I'm all good. Go blue. That Big Ten opener is against USC. So, yeah, there you go. That's where we find out. Scar, great job. Professional job today. Enjoyed working with you. Wisdom, baby. Keeping the faith. Go blue. I'm all blue, man. We I ain't jumping ship. There he is. Buck me, Buck me Mo- hey, Monday, we're breaking down the film. Monday, you and me breaking it down. Can't wait. See you then. All right, brother. 